Hi all, today we are going to learn about chest tube and nursing care of patient with chest tube. What is a chest tube? It is a tube that is inserted into pleural space or cavity to drain air or fluid and it helps lung to re-expand. It is also inserted into mediastinum to drain fluid after cardiac surgery. What is mediastinum? It is a space under sternum or center of the thoracic cavity. Now what is pleural space? If you look the anatomy of lung, the lung is covered by two pleural membrane, outer parietal, inner visceral, outer parietal and inner visceral. The space between these two pleural membrane is known as pleural space or pleural cavity which you can see here as red in color. This pleural cavity has small amount of fluid called pleural fluid. It acts as a lubricant when these two membrane glide in opposite direction when we breathe in and out, creating a negative pressure in the pleural cavity, which helps to lung expand. So imagine what happened if fluid or air accumulates in this pleural space, definitely the pressure will increase, causing lung to collapse. Now let's see the indication of chest tube, hemothorax, blood in pleural space, pneumothorax, air in pleural space, pleural effusion, that is excessive fluid in pleural space. This can be hemothorax, as I mentioned earlier, blood. It can be pus or infection, which is called empyema, or chylothorax, that is lymphatic fluid in the pleural space. In these cases, chest tube is inserted to drain. It is also inserted after cardiac or lung surgery. Once the chest tube is inserted, it is connected to the drainage system. Now let's see what is drainage system. This is the picture of the drainage system. The chest tube is connected to a drainage system. This drainage system has three chambers. First is drainage chamber or collection chamber, water seal chamber, and suction chamber. And at the bottom of water seal chamber is the air leak monitor, air leak monitor. The drainage chamber collects drain from the patient. It is calibrated so you can measure the output per hour or per shift. And in case if there is excessive drainage, make sure you inform the physician. Now the water seal chamber. The water seal chamber is filled with a pre-packed water, which you fill the chamber prior connecting to the chest tube through a port at the top. And this water in the water seal chamber act as a one-way valve. It helps to prevent air from re-entering back to patient's lung. And the water in this water seal chamber fluctuates as we breathe in and out. This is known as tidally. You see the water column going up and down, which is known as tidally. That is normal. What if tidaling is not present? That means either there is a kink in the tubing or the lung has to expand. So make sure all your connection or the tubing is free of kink and occlusions. Now the air leak monitor at the bottom where you look for bubbling, air leak monitor. If you have a constant bubbling here, that means there is somewhere leak in the system. Make sure the connections are well secured, tape, inform the physician. In case if there is intermittent bubbling here, you may see that in pneumothorax. That's normal. Now the suction chamber. This drainage system can be to water seal or to suction. What is water seal? That means it is it drains by gravity. It is not connected to suction. Whereas if the physician wants to connect to suction, 
this drainage chamber should be connected to a wall suction. You have to set up a wall suction which should be always greater than minus 80 centimeter water or higher. And connect the wall suction to the chest tube drainage system. And the amount of suction you can regulate through a rotary dial up here which you can turn here. If the physician wants chest tube to connect to minus 20, turn this rotary dial and this dial, this will point towards minus 20. Right now it's pointing towards minus 20. If physician wants at minus 10, turn the dial here and you can point it towards minus 10. And once the suction is on, you can see this is the suction bellow. You can see the bellow expand up to the marker level or beyond the marker level that indicates the suction is on if the suction is not on you may not see the suction bellow it looks like accordion you may not see this and this is dry suction so what is wet suction in wet suction as i mentioned earlier the drainage system should be connected to wall suction you can see the connection here it should be connected to the wall suction but the ha in in wet suction there is water and height of the water column regulates the suction whereas in dry suction there is a rotary dial and a suction bellow whereas in wet suction there is no rotary dial no bellow instead there is a water column and the height of the water decides or regulates the suction. If the physician wants at minus 10, that is calibration, that is marking at the side, fill the water level up to minus 10. If the physician wants at minus 20, fill the water level up to minus 20. And once the suction is on, you may see a con continuous bubbling in the suction chamber. So continuous bubbling in the suction chamber, that is normal. Always make sure in your shift the water column height is adequate because this water may evaporate over time. Now let's see the nursing care of patient with chest tube. When you have a patient with chest tube, you have to monitor the respiratory rate, pulse ox, pulse oximetry, breath sounds. Assess the insertion site. Make sure the dressing is clean, dry, intact. Monitor the drainage, amount and color. If in case there is excessive drainage, inform the physician. Assess for sub-Q emphysema. What is sub-Q emphysema? That is air get trapped in the subcutaneous layer of the skin. You may hear or you may feel crackling or popping when you palpate the skin. Make sure the connection, the tubing are free of kinks, occlusions and dependent loops. Always keep the drainage system below patient chest level and in upright position. Do not milk or strip the chest tube. See the physician order. Do not clamp unless ordered by the physician. Encourage cough, deep breathing exercises. You should always have sterile water, gauze tape that is occlusive dressing at the bedside. In case if the chest tube becomes dislodged, cover the dressing site, cover the site with sterile dressing and tape on three sides. It allows air to escape and prevent tension pneumothorax, immediately inform physician. What if your system breaks? Insert one inch tube into the bottle of sterile water. It acts as a water seal. That means it prevents air from re-entering back to patient lung. Get a new system, connect, an informed physician. Hopefully you understood more about chest tube and nursing care of patient with chest tube. Thank you for watching my video.